فَإِنَّهُ سُئِلَ عَنْ وَالِدِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم This scholar, Sharaf al-Din al-Munawi, was asked regarding the father of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم هَلْ هُوَ فِي النَّارِ Someone asked, is he in the hellfire? فَزَعَرَ السَّائِلْ زَعْرَةً شَدِيدَةً That the shaykh roared. Za'ara is to roar or bellow. He roared intensely against the questioner. And this, the questioner then said, Hal thabata islamuhu? Is his Islam proven? So there are two things. People who state that the parents of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, did not attain salvation, remember they cannot prove that the parents عنهما, committed polytheism. This can never be proven it, from any source that they committed polytheism, that they worshipped idols. This is a fact. And he states, فقال, so the question then changed the question that is their Islam established? Now obviously they passed away before the announcement of the prophethood of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But we do know that Sayyidatuna Amina radiallahu anha witnessed light emanating from herself as narrated in the Sahih of Ibn Hibban, the light of prophethood. But he's, so this man asked, is the Islam established? And he stated, إِنَّهُ مَاتَ فِي الْفَتْرَةِ وَلَا تَعْذِيبَ قَبْلَ الْبِعْثَةِ Which means that he passed away, Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu an, passed away فِي الْفَتْرَةِ Now the meaning of the word al-fatra, do not confuse this with al-fitra. Al-fitra is the natural disposition given to a human by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But al-fatra is the gap, the period with the ta, the two dotted uh, ta, that that period in which there are no prophets sent to the people living at that time. Those people are referred to as being ahlul fatra. So he states that these people, meaning the parents of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa most specifically Sayyiduna Abdullah radiallahu an, was from ahlul fatra. People who lived at the time when no prophet had been sent to them. He states, وَنَقَلَهُ سِبْتُ بْنِ الْجَوْزِ فِي كِتَابِ مِرْآتِ الزَّمَانِ عَنْ جَمَاعَةٍ فَإِنَّهُ حَكَى كَلَامَ جَدِّهِ عَلَى حَدِيثِ إِحْيَاءِ أُمِّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم Now Sibtu ibn, uh, ibn al-Jawzi is the grandson of Abdul Rahman ibn al-Jawzi. Rahimahullah ta'ala, the scholar of, in Baghdad who lived in the uh, 500s of his, according to the Hijri calendar and his grandson Sibt ibn al jawzi was a Hanafi. His grandfather was a Hanbali. He also relates the same position in his book Mir'atu Zaman and he relates this from a group of scholars. Later on we will see that Mullah Ali Qari was wrong in asserting that the majority of the scholars took his position. In fact, the overwhelming majority of scholars took the position of any one of these three masalik, any one of these three positions. And he states, after mentioning the statement of Al Imam Abdul Rahman ibn Jawzi on the fact that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revived his parents, after they passed away. This is one of the miracles that we will discuss later. He, after Al-Imam uh, uh, Al Abdul Rahman Ibn Jawzi mentioned this, he had something to say regarding this hadith. Many of the scholars weakened this hadith. And his grandson says, ثُمَّ قَالَ مَا نَصُّهُ وَقَالَ قَوْمٌ قَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولَ وَالدَّعْوَةُ لَمْ تَبْلُغْ أَبَاهُ وَأُمَّهُ فَمَا ذَنْبُهُمَا That he relates this position, who Sibt ibn al-Jawzi. He states that a group of people state, 
قَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى That Allah the Most High states, We will not punish وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Until we send a messenger. And he states, وَالدَّعْوَةُ The call to Islam, لَمْ تَبْلُغْ أَبَاهُ وَأُمَّهُ Did not reach the father of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the mother of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَا ذَنْبُهُمَا Therefore, what is their sin? Meaning they have no sin. He states also that al ubay in his commentary of the Sahih of Imam Muslim mentions this position. After mentioning this, he has a point which is very interesting. He states, مَا لَحَافِذُ الْعَصْرِ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ أَبُوا الْفَضْلِ إِبْنُ حَجَرٍ فِي بَعْدِ كُتُبِهِ فَقَالْ وَالظَّنُّ بِآلِهِ يَعْنِ الَّذِينَ مَاتُوا قَبْلَ الْبِعْثَةِ أَنَّهُمْ يُطِيعُونَ عِنْدَ الْإِمْتِحَانِ إِكْرَامًا لَهُ لِتُقَرَّ بِهِمْ عَيْنُهُ ثُمَّ رَأَيْتُهُ He states that he found in some of the books of Al-Hafiz Ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani rahimahullah ta'ala The author of Fathul Bari What did he find? That he states وَالظَّنُّ بِآلِهِ my dhan, now the word, uh, the meaning of dhan is, if, it would mean here a rajih, the preferable opinion. Otherwise, it, it would become shak, doubt. If someone does not prefer something, it is not referred to as a dhan, it's referred to as shak. And this is if a person is uncertain, they refer to this as shak. And if he takes the other opinion, then the counter opinion is referred to as waham. But if he prefers opinion, that opinion is referred to as a dhan. So he states, my position on this is what? He states that the family of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who passed away prior to the announcement of prophethood, Prior to the announcement of prophethood, they will obey. They will obey at the time of the test. This uh, is referring to what will take place on the day of judgment. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test some of the people who will state that no messenger was sent to us. He states they will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikraman lahu. To sh for nobility of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also that the eye of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam may be cooled. لِتُقَرَّ بِهِمْ عَيْنُهُ By them. Meaning uh, this will please his eye sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. Then he states, ثُمَّ رَأَيْتُهُ Meaning he states, I saw this statement of Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar in one of his books. Imam Jalaluddin Abdul Rahman states this. 